G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, of course I would like to thank you all, because today is the day that I reached 50,000 subscribers. It's an absolutely massive milestone for me, and it is halfway to my goal of 100,000 subscribers. I would love to get that, I would love to get myself the silver play button so I can hang it up on a wall as one of my uh, crowning achievements, that along with my, uh, with my degree, so... That would be a pretty pretty big thing, and uh, we're halfway there, so thank you very much for that, and thank you very much for those of you that continually support the channel, not just with likes and subscriptions and follows on Twitch and Instagram and Twitter, and of course on Discord, but those of course that are monetary supporters, and I really absolutely appreciate those guys. They make my work a lot more worth the time and the money and the effort and today, we're going to be putting as much effort as possible into this absolute bus. This is the MiG-23M. And in real life, the MiG-23M was not a very popular plane. It was considered to be inferior to certain versions of the MiG-21. And in this game, it translates pretty damn well. The MiG-23 is a bit of a struggle bus and isn't really one of those planes that you can just sort of switch off and enjoy the time that you play War Thunder. You have to really put some effort and put some thought and and get a bit of luck as well into this plane. It's just difficult to play overall and you'll kind of see as the gameplay pans out in a minute that the only planes that I'm going to be really taking on and taking on successfully are people that are either distracted, don't know what they're doing, stock or otherwise unaware. This plane is not an easy plane to fly and it has not been a joy to fly at all and I have to stress that because if someone is looking to put time, effort, maybe money into buy into to grinding this thing out or buying modules, I would advise against that to be honest. I would personally stick with the MiG-21 BIS or perhaps the SMT at 10.7 or alternatively just going with something else like the MiG-19 at 9.7 which no longer sees this top tier combat. So, MiG-23M, what exactly is so bad about it? Well, it has a couple of things that are real standouts. First of all, let's let's talk about the, the negatives here. This plane is very fat. It is a very heavy plane, and of course, you can see where those missiles stick out. There is plenty of drag there, of course, and those big R-23 missiles, uh, you only get two of them. Unfortunately, you are still down two missiles compared to, say, the F-4E and F-4EJ. You have six missiles, but it's okay. You can switch out those two R-23s, which I am taking the T variant here for. Uh, you can take the R60 instead, which is not too bad at all. But um, in this case here, I'm going to try and do some sort of multi-aspect or all-aspect range here, all-aspect combat. And I am successful in my first endeavor with this F4E, who, like I said earlier, is not really paying attention. And these are the types of kills that you're going to kind of be limited to, because a couple of recent changes have happened with the R60s, and I think all missiles across the board, they all seem to just love flares now. Even the AIM-9Js seem to have a special affinity for flares. So the moment you pop one or two flares, the R-60s are going to head straight towards it. And a couple of other missiles like the PL-5Bs, which we will get to in another video very shortly. But these types of missiles are not very good for this type of combat. And you can see here, this F-4E Pope pops a couple of flares at the last minute, turns away a little bit, and the R-23 follows those really, really closely. Now, this is one thing that really lets this plane down. It has six missiles that absolutely love flares. At least with the AIM-9Js, you have to f spam the flares just a little bit. They are a little bit better at avoiding those flares, but it's something that you have to really take into consideration. You have fewer missiles than the uh, contemporaries, the Phantom, and you also don't have the uh, the gun. The gun is really, really important. You have a 23, a GSH-23, and of course, uh, as you can see in the background footage, I am basically going for the people that are most distracted here. Going for those that are perhaps a target of opportunity. I don't trust these F5s when they have a fire, by the way. You'll, you'll see later, these things are very, very cheeky planes. But uh, they are cheeky also in the sense that they are able to keep up with you if you don't have your wings all the way folded. And of course, when you folded your wings completely, you miss out on a little bit of that maneuverability and a little bit of that uh, 
I guess, energy retention, if you will. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. This plane is essentially a budget Phantom. And when you get a budget Phantom, you take the good things about the F4E and sort of subtract a couple of them. Uh, or subtract portions of the good parts of the F4 Phantom and you are sort of stuck with the MiG-23. Now, the MiG-23 does come with a couple of little things that the Phantom doesn't. That being a pulse Doppler or a Doppler-like radar uh, mode, if you will. And it has IRST, which is the infrared, I think it's search and track or search and target. I'm not sure which one it is, but at the end of the day, it just means that you can take a, uh, a visual so the little camera thing on the front there just before the black bit on the nose I think that's the IRST um, it basically searches via infrared so it's looking at heat signatures and locking onto heat signatures that way um, I believe that's how certain missiles actually avoid their uh, flares and chaff and, and, and other countermeasures they actually use a, a like a visual of the plane and use that instead and I think there's a Russian SPAA that's being developed like as we speak that also uses that instead of radar tracking which I find really really interesting anyway here's a target here with the R23s and uh, no flares from this gentleman and as a result he gets sent back to the hangar warming up another one and the F5 here is an absolute gamer going again for the last minute head-on like I said this is what you get when you pay for last minute head-ons you you do pay dearly with that plane but at the end of the day, I've got two of these missiles, I've spent both of them, and now I don't have any more all aspect uh, abilities. The R23Ts are good, but as long as your opponent is paying attention, they're not going to be usable. And I would like to talk about this in a future video, but despite the R60s having absolute um, incredible flare affinity, meaning that they love going for flares, um, I don't think that they should have this much in War Thunder, just for gameplay purposes, because it feels like a bit of a get out of jail free card. Now, I know a lot of those of you that uh, like the history aspect of War Thunder will highly disagree with me, and that's okay. Uh, maybe we can have a civil discussion about this in the comments below. Is there a good reason why you think that these missiles could be the way they are and stay the way they are or do you think that flares overall are a little bit too strong again I think I'll leave that for another video and we can have a discussion about that then now I'd like you to have a quick note now I've gotten myself into a hairy situation on uh, on accident just because I'm being a bit of a muppet here I have folded back my wings and it is an F5C so I am only fo uh, flying against aim 9 es so I don't have to worry about that missile being extremely strong but I do have a couple of other enemies behind me, and this is where it starts to get hairy. When you have more than one enemy behind you in the MiG-23, it's kind of like having more than one enemy behind you in the F4E. You don't really have many other options other than to either run, or in some cases you are literally left with nothing else other than to hopefully spread your wings and maybe get a kill, maybe find some way out of that absolute sticky situation. This plane relies on the same sort of strategy that the Phantom does, albeit it doesn't have the same capabilities as the Phantom, meaning uh, it is exactly as I put it, a budget Phantom. That being said, you still can do a lot of things as a support fighter, meaning you can sort of help uh, your teammates out when they're in a situation like this here. This uh, F4F Phantom is not really able to get onto his, uh, his friendly, and unfortunately for me, I led a friendly, oh sorry, an enemy F4E towards him, which was uh, a, bit sh a bit shit, but unfortunately, uh, I didn't really have too many other options. Now, I am in a dogfight here with an F4E, and <laughs> I, I had to have to stop and laugh at that just for a little bit, because I could have very easily reversed him with the wings out, and this is exactly what I am trying to do. This other Phantom here rips his wings, and I now have an F5C to deal with. So what I'm going to do, again, is I'm going to make the wings nice and flat, reduce the sweep, and get some more lift. Now, this does kill my speed, but it does give me a little bit of an edge against the F5C. Now, I'm not sure if I can continue to keep this up and sustain dogfights, but I will say that this has worked for me in a couple of different situations, this being one of the situations here. Now, notice the tiny, tiny circle of the R60. This is probably because it is either 
definitely locked on to this particular target or it's not sure if that is the right target to lock on to. So I'm not going to fire, I'm going to go for the guns and that little bit of hesitation there has basically cost me my life here. There's an AIM-9J heading straight for me, I have one flare and I'm not really going to get much out of that one flare. He takes me out pretty easily and that's the match. Believe it or not, in that little second there he managed to clean up two of us and secure the bag. So it really sucks. I have been having an absolutely terrible time with top tier lately, mainly because of the spotting, but also those missiles and the flares. I've found them to be uh, a little bit, a little bit more on the potent side. Those flares and having twelve flares is okay, but it's really not that much in the grand scheme of things. When phantoms have things like in the, I think it's a hundred flares, and the F5C has sixty, and the F5E has like forty-five, something like that. The MiG-21 BIS has something in the realm of 60 or 90, and a lot of the other planes have similar flare counts, but you're here stuck with 12, which is kind of similar to what the Q5 Fantan has at 9.7. It's pretty pathetic, and I can't stand having that little flares, and it's such a letdown on this plane. But it's just one of those things that you have to deal with. This plane like I said, translates to War Thunder from real life quite well. It is definitely not a showstopper in real life, and it is definitely not a showstopper in War Thunder, but you know what? That's not an entirely negative thing. If this thing was hyper-competitive, then there would be some issues as well, because you would have the F4Es struggling the same way that the MiG-23 would be struggling, and I think keeping the meta like this isn't too much of a bad thing. I have struggled and I have molded playing this thing, but I tell you what, when you are in a good situation, when your team is not monkey, then you actually do have some ways to uh, get out of your mess. Now, like I said, you do have to have a good team and your enemy has to basically be monkey, so you do have some limitations in that respect, but I tell you what, sometimes this thing just works and this is one of those matches Aside from, of course, the R23s. The R23s, are, they're a wash. We're not going to talk about them. We, we can have a look at the other ones in the rest of the video and, and marvel at them. But this particular plane is a support fighter. And that's basically all it is. And that's kind of basically all it needs to be. It's just one of those planes that is meant to sit on the periphery and not get into the majority of dogfights. The F5E, on the other hand, is the one that's meant to be stuck in and all guns blazing. Now, speaking of guns blazing, me and my dumbass let that missile rip and basically stole a kill. Don't do that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, uh, I'm very sorry for whoever I stole that kill. I hope it was Fluffy, because Fluffy is one of my mods. He's in here as well, and he's a pretty decent War Thunder player, especially in, when it comes to MiGs and, uh, and Russian stuffs. Very, very good at that type of stuff. Anyway, moving on, we're going to be trying to help a brother out in the MiG-21 here. He looks like he's got some uh, competition on him, F4Es, and they might just be distracted. And these are the types of targets you want to be looking for in the uh, MiG-23. This is the type of stuff that just perfectly fits exactly what you need for a good, cheeky little R60 kill. As I come in, it turns out that he has a lot more on his tail than he bargained for, and of course the aim, uh, or the, not the aim-9s, the R60s ring free and true. So, speaking of ringing free and true, I'm just going to completely bucket through this enemy formation. I do not want to do any dogfighting. I cannot afford to lose any more energy, because at the, the, the moment that someone comes out of this situation and decides that he wants to target me, uh, well, I'm screwed. I need to just keep running, and I don't want to be able to do that. I want to run through, get myself some distance, and then roll over and be in an advantageous position whilst the targets may have you know, switch to a new target, being a friendly, of course. Speaking of friendlies, Fluffy is in a bit of a strife here, but unfortunately for the F4C chasing him, he's not going to be in much of a strife for longer. The strife is going to be on the hand of the F4C, and the F4C is going to want to kill himself just that little bit more, because that is what F4C is all about. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, my previous video on the F4C, of course, if you would like to check that out, be more than welcome to after this video. F5C here looking very, very juicy, and I'm just going to let it rip. I'm just going to spray and go for the kill. It's just one of those kills that uh, came out really nice, and the F5C presented himself as a fantastic target. Now, working with a team, this thing is okay. It is manageable, but the moment you get a bunch of enemies on your six, and the moment you start to lose that advantage in numbers, 
it's pretty much screwed. So you aren't a carry fighter by any means. And I don't think that you can carry in this fighter. I think it is just too much of a bus and just too bulky and awkward. And the missiles aren't quite as good as you would hope, but it's uh, definitely doable and it's definitely manageable. You can also do things like kill steal Floofy's uh, CL-13. I, I tried to do it, I failed, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.